Hello friends and welcome back to um, our Fast API tutorial. This is video 21 where we will touch on the JSONable encoder and uh, updating uh, databases using a request body, if that makes sense. Probably should have written a script for that, but whatever, we're moving on. Okay, so the very first thing that we're gonna look at is just handling data and converting it into JSON. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna set up a fake DB, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we're gonna set up an item class like we've been doing a lot recently. So we're gonna set this up with title being a string, timestamp being a date time, and description being an optional string, which we'll set to none. Then we're going to set up a put route, app.put items ID, and we're gonna set it up as update item, ID is a string, and item is an item. And let's see, let's do fake db ID equals item. And then we're just gonna look at our fake db and return uh, success, just for fun. Okay, let's take a look and see what happens. So we go here and we handle this. <clears throat> we say hello for our ID, and we're gonna see that we get success as a response. But this is an interesting little tidbit right here. So you can see we have a timestamp. We have an actual date time object. Now, when you're writing this to the database, um, you can convert it, you can do whatever you want with it, but there are gonna be certain situations where you're gonna have a, uh, a database that, maybe not a date time, maybe a different data type, but you might have a data type that's not compatible with your database. So what you're going to need to do is somehow convert um, each individual field. Now, instead of manually going in and do it, what we can do is we can instead set json compatible item data equals jsonable encoder and we have already imported this from a prior tutorial i don't remember which one but we're going to set that for item and now we will make this json compatible item data now i'm going to bring this up just a little bit so we can see the difference we execute and now we look we can see title is still a string, but we get, it's no longer an item type. We get the timestamp is a stringified format. We get the description as a string, like everything is, is good. We don't have to worry about converting anything. Okay, so this is, this is the sort of thing that you're gonna wanna have to, to handle when you, you know, you might not, <clears throat> excuse me, if you don't wanna have to go in and manually convert everything this provides a nice little shortcut option for you. Okay, now let's go back in. We're gonna get into, we're gonna update our, our item model. So we're gonna say name is a string or none equals none. I'll pull in the description from down here. We will set price is float or none equals none. Tax float equals 10.5 and tags list of strings equals an empty list. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set items to be a small little database, foo. Name is gonna be foo. Price is gonna be 50.2. Let's set one up for bar. Name bar. description is going to be the bartenders price we'll say it's 62 and tax is going to be 20.2 okay and then let's do one more just for fun let's do baz 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 i'm not sure which baz description is going to be none. Pr 
price is going to be 50.2. Tax is going to be 10.5. And let's see, what are we going to do for tags? We'll do an empty list of tags. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, now, let's first things first, app.get items item ID and we'll say the response model is going to be an item type just for you know making it look better in the documentation async def read item item ID is a string and return items dot get item ID Now, I'm doing it this way just in case I pass in something that's not a string. And I mean, honestly, if we wanted to, we could we should make this an enum so that it's only the items here, the, the keys here, I should say. But that doesn't really matter right now. Let's update our put route. Uh, update item. We'll call this item ID, which will be a string. Item is still an item. And let's do update item encoded equals JSONable encoder of the item items item ID equals update item encoded return update item encoded okay we've got this all set up now let's go ahead and refresh our our page right here if we try blah this should not work well, I mean, it should return nothing. But if we return, if we fetch on bar, we're going to get bar and we're, we're good. Okay. Now what we're going to do, though, we're going to update this item right here. So let's update bar. Now, we're going to change this to bars. We're going to make the description uh, null. I think it has to be null. We want it to be a none, effectively. And we're going to make this price a three. Now, a put request should replace everything. So you notice up here for bar, let's see if I can, there we go. So for bar, we have a price of 62 and this tax here. So what should happen is that tax is going to change because we're not passing it in here. We hit execute and we notice the tax did change. It went to 10.5. <clears throat> now this went to 10.5 because this is the default value here. And we have the tags is a, an empty list here effectively. Okay. So if we were to pass in, um, you know, if we were to, uh, tax one, two, three, <clears throat> You can see the tax updates, the tags still serve the default value, and that's that's all fine and good. That's kind of anticipated behavior. Okay. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add, we're gonna add a patch request. App dot patch items item ID and here and here let's just do response model equals item. I forgot to do that before. Uh, def patch item, and we'll say item ID is a string, item is an item. Now, <clears throat> a patch request, as opposed to a put, should not replace all the data. It should just update the data that we, um, that we pass in. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna say, um, stored item data equals items dot get item ID. And then we're going to say um, if stored item data is not none, because we need to check. Actually, I think we don't even need this. Let's leave this out for now. Stored item model equals item stored item data. We're going to spread out the key value pairs of the item that we're fetching from the database and we're just going to create a model because what we're going to do is we're going to use the update method um, that uh, Pydantic gives us or fast API. I don't remember which one. Now update data equals item.dict 
and then updated item equals stored item model dot copy update equals update data and then we'll say items item ID equals JSONable encoder updated item and we are going to return our updated item and let's also um, print items just so that we can see what it looks like now let's go ahead and refresh the page we're in our patch we're going to let's check blah and see what happens execute yeah there we go we do need that listen we do need that in there um, if uh, stored item data is not none else equals item we're just going to instantiate a new item right there oh no uh, stored item model <clears throat> so let's just check this we want to have some decent error handling in, error handling in here let's check out blah let's see if it works there we go we got all the default values okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at so we can see it set blah which is what we anticipated but now let's look at bar <clears throat> so we're going to take this again bars we're going to make this null and we'll make this three again and let's see what happens we see this we actually got 10.5 and we got the tags so bar if we recall correctly should have a price of 62 which we're overwriting with three but it should have a tax of 20.2 and instead what's happening is um, actually, you know what, let me, instead of printing all of the items, let's print items, item ID, just so it's easier to see. So let's go back here, execute it again. And you notice we get the exact same thing uh, before that, or that we just saw. So the, the issue really comes into play in that FastAPI doesn't necessarily recognize a put or a patch one way or another. Um, it's not going to do certain things for us, especially considering we're actually explicitly um, updating the data we're saying copy let's look at um, update data let's print that as well and see what happens let's go down to the bottom hit execute go down to the bottom again so now look at what's happening we're only um, item dict Item is that. Um, I don't know. I don't know why it's showing that. Okay, regardless. Let's, um, here, let me try this. Let's try this and see what happens. Go down, execute. Yeah, it's still pulling in the default information. Okay, whatever. The point is, that doesn't really matter what's going on. The, the issue that we're coming into here is we want to set exclude unset equals true. Okay, now what this will do is this will look to see what's being passed in, but more importantly, it will look to see what's not being passed in. Okay, so we're not passing in... Um, tax nor are we passing in tags <clears throat> so if we want to update bar what this is going to do is it's going to look through each item that we've passed in here it's going to update with those but nothing else so if we hit execute now you can see we got bars we got the description is null we got the price is three we still got tags because just by default that's um you know that's that's a default parameter in our in our item model right here but what we didn't get is we didn't get an update of tax so we didn't pass in a tax and the default tax is ten and a half but you notice down here that we still have 20.2 as our tax 
So this did not update. And that's what exclude unset does. So it allows you to pass in data. Now this is not gonna, like, this is null. We're explicitly setting this to be null. So it will read that as a null value and it will set that value to null in our quote unquote database. But what it's, what it's also gonna do is it's going to notice what was not passed in. It's just gonna forget about those. Okay, so if we go through this again, just to kind of summarize, we are fetching the stored item. This is really just, you know, error checking because we're using the dot get right here. If it exists, then great, we're gonna create an item based off of that stored item data. Otherwise, we're just gonna create a fresh one. Then we're going to, we're gonna create an update data dictionary where we pass in exclude unset. That's the key part of this whole thing. Then we're just gonna say the updated item, we're gonna take the stored item that we have, we're gonna copy, and we're gonna update with this updated data. And then we're just going to take that data, encode it via the JSONable encoder that we've already grabbed, and we're going to reset the item in, the, in our quote unquote database with that value. So bar actually is updated, bar has tags. If we look at it, you can see right here, this item here, it had tags associated with it because we were creating an item instance and then we were passing that in, okay? So there's a lot of stuff that um, the Fast API will do for you, but there's some stuff it won't. Um, this, this is one of the big things. I actually, when I was building um, an app of, of my own and I was, I didn't know about this, this little piece right there. And I spent a good half an hour trying to figure out what the hell was going on, parse through things myself until I saw that you could just use um, exclude unset equals true. So this is a, this is a big time saver, especially if you're going to, you know, you can, you can have put and patch methods together where one will replace the other, like the put will replace data. The patch will just update what you're passing in. Uh, but this is a very helpful little tidbit. Okay. Uh, next video, we are going to start touching on a kind of like a little subgrouping of, of topics that um, uh, they're called dependencies. Uh, there's, I think, you know, five or six videos that, that we'll do on dependencies, and then we'll get into some other stuff. Uh, okay, I will see you there.